a new cold day. <laughs> Man, the cold here is so different than up north in the interior. Especially where I live right now. We're in the bottom of a valley, an intersection of valleys, where the ocean comes in. Two different rivers come in. And all that ice-cold air that drops during the nighttime whew, sits. And then, it, and then there's a fog to top it off. So it's full moisture, stinging cold. <laughs> it's weird to uh, experience it after you, I grew up here and you hear people talking about it. It's like, well, hey, are you a pussy? <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's a true thing. You got it's a different types of cold. It's true. Interior, dry, prairies, dry, cold, very tolerable. Now you get to this coast. And it just seems like it just penetrates every nerve ending. It's like, Arr! Anyway, that's my bitch for this morning. Not really a bitch, but a heater. I don't leave the heater on in here at nighttime, obviously. So, it's cold in here. Yeah, spent the whole day in the man lift yesterday. Rented a man lift. Because uh, Sarah is a Christmas freak. <laughs> Such a good homemaker. And uh, we bought more Christmas lights and really did up her house and the shop. Took a while, I still have to do a tree in the front yard. And it's so funny to watch how excited she gets. It's pretty cool to see somebody so excited about something so simple to me, right? And of course, there's me, right? The mountain going dude that's like, eh, whatever. So here I am, whatever, I'll get it done. Whatever makes her happy. But to see her ex excitement, it's, it's fun to watch. Even made a time lapse video of doing it in all my bumbles and fumbles. I'll probably get that edited up, put it on sometime. But anyways, I'm a million pages of emails behind. Yet. So many emails. Whatever. It's uh, just the way it is. But I'll get to them. So, what else? Uh, one big important note. Um, again, for, to all you hunters out there who utilize my hunting apps. Um, I... It's... I... It's... One thing that frustrates me is not being able to fix something myself. I fix everything myself. I figure it out. But there's one thing there's I'll never be able to figure out is how to write code or whatever it is they do to the apps. So iPhone and Android, whatever, did new updates, which makes my apps not function properly on a lot of devices. So I'm getting a lot of emails. There's nothing I can do about it. So my one techie that can do something about it, she's in Central America. I just got the email from her. She goes, look. I didn't have good enough Wi-Fi where I was to get in there and and uh, update them, but I will as soon as I can, and I'm in the jungle right now. So that's what I got, and that was a couple days ago, and she will be on it. But in the meantime, quick request. If any of you know someone who is possibly a combo of avid outdoors person or a, or a uh, avid follower of this channel, my shit, and you want to... Uh, be creative with me and help manage my hunting apps I'd be totally stoked to take you on and my apps are both for Android and iPhone okay and I really 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 want someone to jump in there with me and get these things going all right because my hands have been tied with them I can't do shit without somebody who's into it okay I love that so get a hold of me um, wherever any of the emails any of them get it to me how about how about uh what do we usually use here share my story how to now probably pro guide 66 at how to hunt.com if you would like to help manage my hunting apps with me all right i have a lot of great ideas and what i want to do with those things they need more attention and they do help a lot of people now let's get into it let's hear some people This is titled, Amazing Picture from Washington State. Hey Steve, here's a picture taken by a county sheriff somewhere near Yakima, Washington. I received it from a friend, origins unknown. That's what I was told and all I know about the picture. Maybe it's an old picture, but I've never seen it. Feel free to share it. Love the channel, man. Keep it up. Craig C. Washington State. All right, what do we got? That looks to me right off the bat like a oh, stupid band-aid. Chiseled a chunk of my frickin' hand off yesterday. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, that looks like a uh, a railway tie, gravel on it. I'm guessing. I'm like I'm thinking that's a rail a railway. So what's the top for rail track, you guys? My rail workers out there, was it about three inches wide? Yeah, I'm gonna say three and a half inches wide across the top of the rails. So if it's three and a half, that means that one foot is potentially, whatever this is, uh, it's just another photo. Could be authentic, maybe, maybe not um, from in relation to the trees behind it, which is new growth due to the area cleared out for the road or the railway. I'm pretty sure that's railway. That means that the foot on that thing is about 12 inches, maybe. The hands maybe six inches wide, the palm, I don't know. Do I think it's authentic myself? My tummy says no. But that's just me. What do I know, right? What's going on, adventure dog? I gave you your your deer treat for the morning. Did you get ready to get tired of it? Huh? Oh, I guess I better uh, get that shared up with you guys here, all right? So hopefully, it's just easier for me to do it this way. I'll see later on after editing if I can slide that photo in there with you guys, all right? That's the photo. Excuse me. No, I've never seen it before in my life. Do I think it's authentic myself? Nope. Thanks for sending that in, man. You never know, right? I'm no expert. I'm definitely no expert on photos. That's for sure. But there you go. Shared, as usual. You send it, it gets shared, and everybody is left to take from it what they will or leave it. Man, I wish, I, I wish we had a full... <clears throat> it would be great if we had... Does anybody out there know anyone who is absolutely in tune with themselves, with their guts, with the guts, which I call it, and knows how to teach that? Man, oh man, what I would dive on that like a fat kid on a smarty. I'll tell you what, if I could teach with confidence how to be in tune with your gut instincts, I would dedicate my life to teaching the world that skill because I do strongly believe I know what the outcome of that would be and it would be a better living for everyone. Somebody could just... Anyway. Moving along. Moving along. This is titled, Try This Again. Hi, Steve. With all the trouble you've had with emails, I thought it best to try and send this again. You can use my name. Anyone who gives me grief will get their ass kicked. <laughs> all right. I watched your video titled, quote, what the H is that, end quote. And then you read an email about someone reaching a spot while hunting where the air turned ice cold and he could see his breath. And you said you weren't sure what that could be. Well, I have experienced that. Same thing, but not in the woods. When my younger brother, who passed February 2020, sorry to hear that, got married, he and his new wife were renting an apartment from which they came up to our house one night with some friends scared out of their minds. We finally got them calmed down enough to get the gist of what was going on. It appeared that since they had moved in to the apartment about 10 days earlier, they were having strange things going on, like, like people being thrown off of beds, items being thrown around, what you may typically think of as poltergeist activity, one of my brother's friends got the bright idea to bring a Bible and exorcist the ghost. Well, it appeared, whatever the entity was, it did not take kindly to what they were doing and basically attacked them by causing the equivalent of a tornado inside the apartment with all of their possessions, clothes, dishes, appliances, ex appliances, etc., flying around, driving them out of the apartment. And they came to our house scared to death. There's no doubt they had experienced something real and terrifying. They intended to move out right away, but would not go back there come hell or high water. So I, with the help of my other brother and our mom, went down the next day to gather up their belongings. What a hell of a mess. The stairway going up to the apartment was full of clothes, papers, and pans. 
just like you would find in a tornado aftermath. I was wearing a, I was wearing a piece medal that was blessed, hoping it might give a little protection, and I believe it did. The whole apartment was trashed. No damage to walls or trim, etc. Just their belongings. We started taking items out and down the stairs without talking much. When I emptied out the cubby hole to the one side of the stairs, I pulled the string to turn on the light. And when I came back up for another load of stuff, the light in the cubby was back on. This continued to happen. Each time I would turn it off before going down the stairs, I'd find it turned back on when I came back up the stairs. However, the kicker was, when I entered the living room, it was totally void of anything. Like it was the center of a vortex, and it felt like I had just walked into a freezer. I could see my breath. I knew then that this was where the portal was, and where this entity was coming through. You could sense this was not a safe place to be. It totally freaked me right out. There was always a, quote, for rent, end quote, sign in the window of that apartment. I couldn't find anyone who would slash could stay there. I think what the hunter who emailed you ran into that day was a portal that had opened up. Maybe he was being warned not to enter it to protect him by whoever. Only God knows what may have happened to him if he had gone too much further. Even though I've never seen a Sabe that I know of, I have experienced some strange things like all the woods going silent, and I have no doubt of their existence. Plus, if the powers that be say they don't exist, you know they do, because they lie like rugs. I have, however, seen a cloaked creature while on a trip, and what I realized just a few days ago, what that creature was or appeared to be. I just turned on to a two-lane highway in West Virginia and hadn't picked up any speed yet when I saw crossing the road just in front of my vehicle a small bipedal figure, maybe eight inches tall. If I'd been going faster, I would never have seen it, as it was cloaked, like in the Predator movies, just a shimmer with a leading edge to it, and it walked with a ratchet-like gait. I saw this in 2016, and I didn't know what it was, but it certainly opened up my mind on the possibilities of what... Oh, that thing's running out, sorry. On the possibilities of what we don't know about in this world. A few days ago, on a nature documentary, I saw a gecko lizard walking on four feet with the exact same movement. I'm not kidding you. That put some wind in my sails when I saw that gecko moving. In a flash, I was back there watching the cloaked creature again. So, there are small bipedal lizards with the ability to walk upright, can cloak themselves, and are living on this planet with us? Even though it was cloaked when I saw it, the gait it had was just like a gecko. That is, that is a scary thought. How big do they get, do you know? If I hadn't seen that thing and I heard myself telling the story, I would think I was nuts. But I know what I saw. I just don't know what it was that I saw. On a different note, I've always believed that I did not originate from Earth, and I belong somewhere else. I know, haha, but maybe we all belong somewhere else. So when you talk about finding out who we really are, I can relate. There was a man, Ken Klein, who was an expert on deciphering the Bible. There was a guest on Coast to Coast with George Nouri. He believes that we are kept from the knowledge of who we really are by the fallen angels. Luciferians, sound familiar? Klein said that God had punished Lucifer on his followers, and his followers, along with the Ophanim, Ophanim, for having an unsanctioned slashed unapproved war by casting them out of the heaven and commanding them to take human form. While Lucifer and his followers refused to take human form, the Ophanim did, and were supposedly their descendants. Now the fallen ones have used various means to make us forget. They poison our food, air, water. Fluoride slows down the metabolism and calcifies the pineal gland, which is used for psychic abilities, and vaccines and meds. The list goes on and on. My theory is, I believe that the Sabe know who we are, and the evil ones try to keep us afraid of each other for a few reasons. First, if we all joined forces with the Sabe people, we would be a force to be reckoned with. Plus, they know the Sabe are part of us and would help us remember who we are and could help us regain the powers we have lost. They are 
hunted down because of us, which could cause a lot of hard feelings, even though it isn't our fault. Also, you may be right about Sabe being afraid of us. Having us see them being considered a no-no. Maybe some don't know we have forgotten our abilities, while others do, just a thought or two. It's my belief that God is taking down the evil in the world, and it won't be long until freedom is really here, at last. Living in peace would be a wonderful thing with no politicians. The real world you and most of us who are awake dream of. Bless you and your family and the menagerie of critters. That's my kind of life I have hunted for 54 years, and last year is my first year of hunting archery. I was 66 in March. I say it's never too late. If you rest, you rust. And use it or lose it. That's a good one. That is so true. Let me say that again. If you rest, you rust. Use it or lose it is so true. Get off your butts. Big time. Same with your brain. Use your brain. Don't let your brain be directed. Take care. Keep giving them hell. Your partner in crime, Deborah Jabbins. Deborah, appreciate you. That email covered a few different topics, didn't it? I'll tell you what, man. When I was a little kid, I snuck, snuck watched The Exorcist. Urgh. Terrifying. Terrifying for a kid to watch. I'm definitely not a fan of that topic. I'm just not into it. I have no interest in it. I don't want it in my life. I don't want to know about it. I don't want it in my home. I'm good. That's a whole different flavor of something going on that I'm not familiar with and I'm really not interested in having any kind of connection to myself. Now, the what may or may be not going on with who these beings are, the Bible, God, fallen angels, take from what you will leave it, but I'll tell you what, it sure is pointing in that direction. If your mind is open, it's about one of the only, so far for me, it's about one of the only directions that seems to fit, that just seems to fit. As you look at all the patterns, all the testimonies from all of you, so far, that is really starting to mesh up, right? There is something freaking crazy going on. Without a doubt, we are a species living with amnesia across the board. Is it forced amnesia? Without a doubt. It's another rabbit hole for a lot of others, right? But if you are looking for, if you are seeking truth, which I am, and this topic of what a lot of us see in the woods and experience, it is the gateway to a whole lot of realities. There's no way out of it. And all you people have witnessed firsthand, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Unless you want to push it away because you can't handle it and you just want to go it away. You want it to go away and pretend that you did not see. Whatever, whatever you need to be, that's fine. But something's going on. You know, I was noticing yesterday we had to go into town and go to a couple big stores where there's a lot of people, which I haven't been around for a while. And I went, one thing I noticed yesterday was, you got to admit, with all of us, don't you find that, you know, you walk, for me, I don't know why, when I walk into a room full of people, I look at every single human being, and I'm not doing it intentionally, I just find that I do. And I go straight to the eyes. And, you know, obviously when somebody glances at you, you look away. Because, because our gaze freaks out other humans if we're not familiar with them, right? It just does. Why is that? That our eyesight, what we project with our eyeballs, is of interest to me. Because it has such an effect on these powerful beings. They don't like our eyes catching. Same with wolves. I've walked up to caught wolves and traps, and the majority of them they don't. They look they don't want to they don't want to connect eyes. They don't. They look away. Avert avert eye contact. They don't want eye contact with me. At all costs, except for the alphas. The alphas will look at you. But and what I'm saying is the power of our eyes is, is something I would like to learn more. There's something more going on with either what we used to be able to do with our eyes, what we potentially can do with our eyes, but something's going on with our eyes and our sight. Something's going on. 
We subconsciously look at each other, look at strangers in passing, glance at the eyes, and that's all we need. Just a quick glance, and we look away. Why don't we glance at toes? <laughs> right? Why don't we glance at toes automatically? Why don't we glance at somebody's right hand automatically in a crowd when we go person to person walking along, glancing over? We subconsciously go for the eyes every time, a split second, we just casually glance, 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 and you know, looking at people, eyeballs, eyeballs, glancing. Take note of it. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a weirdo. But what I have found is that even in traffic, <clears throat> somebody's pulling in front of you, hanging a right, you're at the stop sign, you glance at their eyes. I'm not glancing at their ear subconsciously. My eyes automatically instantly go to strangers' eyeballs. Why is that? And what is my subconscious checking for? Is that a you know, I, I hope I'm making sense, you guys. But what is my subconscious automatically checking for by giving somebody else's eyeballs a quick glance? Right? As soon as I see those eyeballs, I look away and I check out the next person. And I'm not doing it intentionally like I'm thinking somebody's going to jump me. I'm just casually following behind Sarah with a shopping cart and I'm glancing at people, checking their eyeballs. I note, I note that I am checking people's eyeballs subconsciously. Now, when you apply it to what we're learning here in the patterns, we have these beings whose eyes are self-illuminating. Accept it or not, I don't give a flying shit. I'm no dumbass. I haven't seen it myself. But when tens of thousands of my brothers and sister human beings share with me what they saw, I accept it. <laughs> Period. So, what's up with the self-illuminating eyes? What's up with our elders telling us, of all nationalities, telling us not to look them in the eye? Why? Right? Our eyesight. Our eyesight. Something's going on with what we could do. What we possibly still can do with our eyes. And we have been trained Two, as a survival mechanism possibly, we're checking other eyeballs. For what? That's what I'm getting at. For what? What is our subconscious looking for when we pass strange humans and glance at their eyeballs? What are we, what are we looking for? Right? Big Grizzly on the Highway is the title of this email. Steve, this picture is in the Cowboy State Daily. Online newspaper, not far from my home. Pretty cool. <laughs> that is a cool shot. Girls are cruising on down the middle of a highway. Owns the joint. Take them a path of least resistance. Looks like fall. Maybe hoping for some roadkill to stack on his fat ass before he goes, goes for his sleep. It is a cool picture. Um... I don't know if this is working. If it is, I'll use this. If not, I'll I'll post it up in the edit part. Grizzly bears. <clears throat> What's this one? Ooh, it was a long one. Still early in the segment. I'm going in. Do I know what it's about? Nope. Could find out in a second. This is titled, First Part in Brackets is for You. All right. All right, man, I gotcha. Okay. Was always a believer before I was a knower, back when I was still in, in addiction. And you busted free, you're a kick-ass strong person. Back when I was in, still in addiction, I used to watch a lot of your YouTube channel. I was fascinated by the hunting stories. When you started reading Sasquatch emails, I was hooked. I'm just mentioning this to let people know. Steve inspired me to start a YouTube channel in 2020 after I made the choice to get clean. Okay... No punctuation there. For the first few years, I would spend my time doing TikTok lives and being a safe place for people to come and talk about their encounters without judgment or being ridiculed. Of course, me and the 
Sasquatch gang would be going out investigating through these years, kind of, kind of all uh, undocumented times. St. Louis County, Missouri call. There was one experience back then that still sticks out to me. Myself, Sasquatch seekers, and Ken, members of the Sasquatch gang, were all out on a night walk at Chipmunk Caves in Chilliwack, B.C. Hold on, I'm going to get rid of that background sound. I don't like the, the heaters bugging me. I know it probably doesn't bug you guys, but background sounds bug the shit out of me. All of us were standing in the mouth of the cave. We decided to play a call. The St. Louis County, Missouri one. After the first call, something jumped out of the tree 30 feet away from us. It sounded like an elephant hitting the ground. Then nothing, dead silence. When it happened, it hit when it happened, it hit every one of us like a shock wave. Not long after that, I offered some tobacco and we hiked out of there. I know it's one I'll never forget. Grandfather Stone slash Staff. So a few years ago, so a few years go by, and me and the boys are still doing our thing undocumented for the most part. My twin brother Lee and Ken went out looking for signs of Sasquatch and set up some trail cams in an area of Chehalis, BC, where the word Sasquatch originates from. Fun fact. As they went in, they passed a log that had five stones on it. They went in, set cams, and on the way out, they stopped to have a break at the log. They noticed one of the stones had some markings on it. They took some pictures of it. Once they got home, I looked at the picture right away, and I knew it was not a normal stone. It being Sasquatch, knowing lots of native people from the area, I decided to ask around to see if anyone knew what these markings were. A friend of mine from the St. Ailes First Nations told me that the one was a symbol they've been using for thousands of years. So... Finding that out, I had to go back to get the stone. Keep in mind, there was five stones on the log previously. Two days later, I went out alone to get the stone. When I got there, there was only two stones on the log and a six-foot staff-like stick leaning against the log. Things changed in two days. And I, th I that was pretty significant, so I, I think he meant I thought that was pretty significant, so I grabbed the stone and stick and walked out. Still not knowing my connection with the Sasquatch people, but I could hear them walk with me. Their footfalls, they escorted me out of the forest that day. What was on the stone? We have the story of transformation. They, Halls, is the symbol. Sorry, they, Xals, X-A-L-S, bracket, Halls, and bracket, is the symbol for the great transformer. Then we have man and woman. This is the story of transformation from spirit to physical. The Sasquatch work with the great transformer. That's what we've been, that's what I've been told. Sighting of 2022. It's September 24th, 2022. Me and Sasquatch seekers decided to see if we could catch a couple of coho salmon on the Chehalis River. It was one week after I grabbed the grandfather's stone. We were fishing about one kilometer from the log. It was a beautiful sunny day, very hot, no punctuation there. I was just in my shorts and I was sweating like crazy for reference. We were down from the campsite about a kilometer fishing. I turned around and noticed this tall figure standing at the edge of the forest on the right side of my vision. Head to toe in a light brown, head to toe in a light brown color being. So hot out, I thought the guy was nuts. Then it started walking out. The space between its legs was so big. That was the first thing I, that really stepped out to me. I think he meant stood out to me. I turned to Sasquatch 
Seekers laughing, saying, dude, I think we're having a Sasquatch sighting. He continues to walk across the rock beach, stopping by a stump. It turned, looked at me, and paused for a minute, and continued on walking through the river towards the St. Ailes First Nations Reservation, and disappeared out of our sight. Later, I walked down to the stump. It was six foot tall, and the Sasquatch was double size of the stump. Finding out about my connection. So I'd regularly do my Sasquatch TikTok lives every morning and evening. One night a random person joined and said they had a message for me. I asked who had a message. Kind of laughing about it. She told me that Sararia? Sararia. Sararia. S-A-R-A-R-I-A-H. Your Sasquatch wants to know that they wants you to know that they walk with you, they guide you. Right then, while I was sitting in my living room on my live, I feel this gigantic hand palm my head, four fingers across my forehead, giant palm on my head, and thumb on the bottom of my neck, squeezing, pulsating. I describe it as electrical pins and needles, a vibrational sensation. I instantly knew that this was really happening. My mind was being opened to the supernatural side of the Sasquatch. That's a little different. High strangeness. Another time, me and my friends were fishing about 20 feet apart, and out of nowhere, a very loud guttural huff slash grunt came out of thin air right in between us. Bother turning, looking at each other, confused. A couple typos, but we'll get through this. I asked, was that you? I said, no. I knew it was our friends making their presence known. This area we were fishing has had many sightings over the years. The next summer, me and my twin would go on a hike in the same area and track a Sasquatch for seven kilometers with a sighting. We'll get back to that in a bit, though. Triggered memory. A few months after my sighting, I had a triggered memory come back to me, so technically that was my first encounter or sighting that happened when I was about eight years old. My parents' friends were building a house in the back of Mission, B.C., basically in the middle of nowhere. There was a creek that ran through the backyard and into the forest. A section of it was like a little swampy area. I was playing in it. I was crouched down, squatting, playing with the skunk cabbage, and directly across from me, about 10 feet away on the other side of the swampy area, there was a hairy being. Small, definitely juvenile, about 5 feet tall, I guess, covered in black hair. It would mimic my every move. If I picked up the skunk cabbage, it was already doing it, mirroring everything I did. I heard my parents call my name and turned my head, and when I looked back, it had vanished into thin air, just disappeared. My eight-year-old mind registered it as seeing a bear, but looking back on it now, I know it was a Sasquatch. Connecting the Sasquatch gang slash elementals. So it's been about five months after the sighting in 2022. I've learned that Sasquatch people are interdimensional, possibly even ultra-dimensional beings, masters of elements. When we capture them on video or picture, they're often not alone, usually with what we call elemental forest spirits. I'll show examples of that here. Now, on one of our walks, in the gifting area, we do a big loop, four kilometers roughly, as we pass the log on the way in my, in my quartz stone I left for them in the middle of the log. It was still there when I, it was still there where I left it. On the way out from doing the loop, I'm approaching the log about 100 yards away. I'm walking through a dry riverbed, and amongst the cobblestone, there was one black volcanic stone that stuck out to me. Half of it was smashed into shards. Something told me to grab them. It was like an instant reaction. Not even looking for them, I shoved them in my pocket. Walking up to the log now, I see the quartz stone was moved to one side of the log. I got closer and saw that it's actually being switched out for a completely different stone. It was a pinkish colored one now. I pulled out the shards and noticed there was five in an instance. I knew... I was supposed to put one down where the new stone was and give one to each member of the Sasquatch gang. Two weeks later, we went back and the black shard I left was gone. 
So now all members of the Sasquatch gang and our Sasquatch have a piece of the stone. This was their way of connecting us through some of the elements they are masters of. Random things. The Sasquatch people use the elements of our world to traverse it. And they use portals to jump from our world to theirs. Even though they are one and the same. I personally know two people who have witnessed Sasquatch come out of trees and go into them walk right through stone walls and pass through them. That's them using elements, like doorways. If you're lucky enough, they will show you their portals. Me and my twin brother got lucky. One morning, I believe, it was spring 2023, we decided to go Sasquatch around Chehalis Mountain Service Road, about 10 kilometers up. We got out and started walking around. I was a little ahead of my brother. I reached the dead end before him. He was still making his way up towards me. Ahead of me, there was a clear cut about 50 yards away up the hill. In the cut, I see this big, about 15 foot in diameter, swirling vortex that was translucent. It kept swirling until it got the size of a little pinpoint and disappeared. My brother was just getting up to me and I said, I think I've just seen some cloaked portal or something. He said to me, I asked where it was and he pointed directly where it was. These are the things ancestors have been painting on walls and caves for thousands of years. Excuse me. Hairs slash apples. <clears throat> At another area where we go often, I was gifted hair. So we all stopped to set up trail cams, leave some apples and of course eat a few. I was cutting mine with a knife. I took a couple chunks off Looking at the flesh of the apple, it was clean, nothing there. I looked up and back down, and there was a long hair, only on the flesh of the apple, placed in the weirdest way. I knew it was from them. Then we left the trail cam. It was pointed at a stump. It was about five and a half feet tall. We put an apple on top of it. We went back a few weeks later, and there was a picture of a cougar walking by ten days before we got there. The apple was still in that picture. The next picture was the Sasquatch gang, so that's you guys, approaching the camera. So the apple disappeared without the cam going off. All apples that were taken were untouched by us. Our apple cores were still there, so it tells me that they took the app that what took the apples was not an animal. An animal would have eaten all of it, even the scraps. The second hair that was given to me was in my house. This would fall into the supernatural side of them as well. It was about 10 p.m. I was going to bed putting on, putting on an episode of Seinfeld. When I pressed play, my Roku player reset. I didn't think much of it until it happened five more times. The last time it reset, I get this tickle in my goatee. The Roku player turns back on. I go to itch my face and I feel this hair sticking out. When I start to pull on it, it was weaved through my entire goatee. As I pulled it out, it unweaved itself. After that, the episode played fine. I knew I had another gift for my friends. Asking for more. So, it's now summer 2023. We try to go out regularly for hikes to connect with nature and Sasquatch, doing my videos for my Sasquatch YouTube channel. This morning, me and my twin brother Lee were hiking in the back of Mission BC. Now, I've had multiple exchanges with the stones over the past months. Keep that in mind. Now, on this hike, we separated for about a half an hour. And, a, sorry, for about an hour and a half, being guided by the Sasquatch. I find this toy phone in the middle of the forest. Jokingly, I pick it up and start talking to them. I said, okay, guys, the stone exchange has been cool, but I'm ready to see more. Footprints and other sightings, something like marbles. Then I said, and then I said, and a good woman in my life, laughing about it, never thinking all the things I asked for would actually come true, but they did. Getting what I asked for. So it had been a couple weeks since I found the toy phone. Me and Lee decided to go for an early morning hike up, up Norrish Creek, 5.30 a.m. As we were walking the trail, you could tell we were the first people there that day. My twin was a little ahead of me. I was focusing on the videos I make. He found a track that was very strange, four-toed. 
It was heading in our direction. Then we noticed where it turned around and started going back up the trail. We ended up tracking it for seven kilometers. Up and down the mountain at the bottom of the trail, we noticed what looked like a side path that went off towards a farm field. Then a train crossing the main trail goes around to the train bridge. My brother was a little ahead of me when he crossed the tracks. He looked both ways, didn't see anything towards that train crossing. I was on my TikTok live at the time, about a minute behind my brother, when I crossed the tracks and looked both ways. I see this big black figure running down by the train crossing. I have pictures from the live, but they're not the best quality. We came back the next morning to do a size comparison. It was bigger than my twin brother, and we, were, we are big guys. Two possibilities. The Sasquatch seen my brother and ran in the opposite direction, waited down by the crossing in the farm field after watching him cross the tracks, thinking it was safe and made a run for it. I caught him on my TikTok live, or it was meant for me to see. That's two things I asked for when I found the toy phone. About a week later, I was home cleaning up. Everything was done. I turned around and there was two big steel ball bearings placed in the middle of my living room floor. Remember what I asked for? I said something like marbles again. I knew these were from my friends. Now, of course, I tell people on my TikTok lives about my experiences all the time, talking about recent things that have been happening. Now, my future spouse came into my TikTok live as a, as a beta AI. She came in a few times prior, but some of my recent finds got her attention. I started talking more, and before you knew it, she was on her way to meet me. Not long after that, she moved to BC to be with me. Sasquatch people have literally answered my prayers or given me what I asked for. Confirmation. So it's the beginning of October 23. My new lady has been here for a few weeks. My friends haven't been out in a while, so we all got together and went out for a night walk around the Chehalis River. Just the boys. Me and the Seekers decide to go walk around a dried up section of the river looking for signs of Sasquatch. And I came across a glyph. It was clearly an AI. I knew it was them telling me something about my new lady. Her name was... Okay, I'm not going to promote anybody's names on anything, all right? But I didn't know who... I didn't know what until the next morning. The next morning, me and my lady went for a hike in the same area. When I got to the AI glyph, it was replaced with two X's, knowing... Knowing what some glyphs mean, I knew it was them welcoming us both. The X glyph means friendship. Welcome. There was two X's there. It was one for her and one for me. My Sasquatch confirmation that I found the one I was looking for a Sasquatch brought me love. So all this has happened over the last year. I can't wait to see what happens. The next journey has just begun. All right, there's quite the share of someone's personal experiences ongoing in the woods with Something. I don't know anything about the glyph thing. Um, I don't know who named something a glyph. I always hear people talk about X's and glyphs, but I have in the past, uh, when I did lose some time to a couple of Sasquatch themed channels, <laughs> these lunatics were nonstop going, look at these glyphs, look at these X's, these glyphs, glyphs, glyphs. It's like, oh God. Moving on. So that's just me and my all of my experiences with people talking about X's and glyphs. Just for me personally, no interest. That's just me, you guys, all right? Now, the trail camera thing. I will give a little attention to the trail camera thing. Just so everyone knows, as far as I'm concerned, trail cameras are quite primitive. <laughs> well, I believe. The, the trail cameras available to the public today are quite primitive. If you go by what? technology probably is right now in the hands of who really develops it right now as far as myself and trail cam trail camera use goes just so you all know as far as i know i think i was the i know i was the first human being to get stone sheep mountain sheep on trail cameras i remember getting my first trail camera being so excited and i hiked to the top of a mountain and i left it up there during guide season and from then since then i've placed cameras 
alone. I've traveled to Alaska, hiked into the mountains and left cameras up there to try to get doll sheep on them. I've, I have done everything I can think of with literally dozens and dozens of trail cameras. What I'm trying to share with you is my experience with trail cameras. All right. Now, um, I've put trail cameras down from the Southern U S to Alaska, the full length of BC. I have caught wolves chasing deer, cougars chasing deer, cats, cougars fighting, grizzly bears, black bears, packs of wolves, moose, elk, fishers, beavers, chewing trees, rocket, you name it. I've caught it on the trail cameras. But one thing I can assure all of you is trail cameras never work all the time. Every single one of them misses. I'm not saying that's what happened when apples disappear and don't get caught on video. But what I'm just saying is there, the, the possibility of trail cameras missing things when they go down in front of it with full on regular wildlife is huge to the point that I rarely leave one trail camera on a spot. Let's just say an intersection on a trail and we'll consider the intersection on that trail. Very important to me. It doesn't matter how brand new the trail camera is or what manufacturer brand name the trail camera is. Cause I get pummeled with people asking me nonstop, Hey man, what trail camera should I get? They all piss me off equally. I cannot, I could get any trail camera today out of the box, place it on that intersection by itself. And I'm going to be like, Oh God, I hope it works. I wonder how many captures it's actually going to get. And I put two trail cameras on that intersection and both trail cameras pick up and miss nonstop. It doesn't matter if they're old, new, or the brand name, just so all you guys know. So I'm not saying that something did not make something disappear without getting caught. Something unknown to us. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is from my past experience is so much goes on in front of our primitive trail cameras that is not triggered by the camera. It's ridiculous. I get a nonstop. Every single trail camera I have misses and does not catch everything. That's a bit of a spiel on trail cameras, wasn't it? <laughs> but it's, it, I have, I have so much experience with trail cameras. They, I don't even know how many I own. I think currently, I mean, I threw away 10, I think this year because they're all failing like blatant in your face fails Whoosh, 10 in the garbage times that by $200, right? Growl. Oh, I think currently I might have, uh, I don't know, 40, I have 40 trail cameras right now. Maybe I never leave home without them. <laughs> I just don't because I love, I love, I love capturing stuff with them. I'm telling you guys right now, they don't capture everything. Now, uh, getting back to the email or the interdimensional thing, the, um, the other side of the other side of what most of society believes about these particular beings is true. What he says about them entering a tree and coming out of a tree is true. People have been noting this a lot, thousands of times. People I trust with my life have seen this go down. There's nothing. If I can't handle that information, it doesn't mean it's going to go away. Right? If you want to advance in this topic and truth, you better start listening to the people. No matter how, like we always say here, no matter how crazy it sounds, share it. Right? And then you have the option of taking from it what you will or, or leaving it. But if you can't handle the truth, it doesn't mean it's going to go away. If you can't handle it, it doesn't mean that we're going to stop talking about it. Right? I shared you guys in the past, in the very beginning, I thought, I'm a professional hunter. I'm going to find these things easily. Right? Thinking they're just some unknown, upright gorilla or monkey. Piece of cake. I got this. I can find anything. I went 100% in my guiding career, 20 years. There's nothing I can't find. I'll find them. Nope. Well, if I found them, all right, but I didn't find what I thought I was looking for. There's much, much more going on. Much more going on. Anyway, I'm really babbling. I'm really babbling. I've had uh, two juiced up coffees. 
I haven't ate anything. And I could battle forever, apparently, this morning. I'm starting to feel way better. I'm starting to feel way better than what I did the past few days when I first came home. Whew. Now, uh, what do we got here? One second. All right. Okay, here's another email. I have the answers you are looking for. So tell us email. Steve, if you contact me, I can share my knowledge with you. This is knowledge I have gained from thousands, yes, thousands of hours of searching for answers to the governmental shit show we find ourselves in today. This is by no means an accident. It has been meticulously planned for not decades, but centuries. Look, I'm not about to try to chase you through the halls of social media, so I hope this email finds you. If and when you contact me, I believe you should set aside about 30 minutes for us to converse. What I have to inform you on is probably too much to try to back and forth ourselves with electronic mail. So here's my contact information. You have my email here, some telephone. Please text first as I receive hundreds of solicitation. All right, listen, uh, just so you know, I get similar emails possibly daily. I get a lot of people, and I'm not being insulting or condescending in any way. I'm not saying I'm not saying that you um, aren't legitimate, but what I am saying to you is, I receive tens of thousands of emails, and I possibly re I have possibly received emails with a similar theme, possibly daily or weekly. I nonstop get people saying I know everything. If you contact me, I'll share everything with you. Here's my number. You better contact me. <laughs> yeah, get in line. So, for me to, I'm, I'm just going to put, I'm straight up honest. For me to go out of my way and phone somebody from the internet that I haven't a clue who you are, and you have given me absolutely nothing to surge my curiosity or let my gut, my gut needs to make that decision for me to contact anybody this way. My gut needs to. And I got nothing there for my gut to go, holy shit, you better get a hold of this person. So what I'm saying is for you or anybody else who needs, who wants or thinks I'm going to knee jerk, think it's important to phone that number of that stranger who I got nothing from, you got to make my guts tell me. That's who makes my decisions every move I make in life with everything is my gut. I got a gut feeling of urgency that I need to contact you. It ain't there right now. Okay? I'm being honest. My guts isn't even half <laughs> itching. There's nothing there. So, if you believe you have some very important knowledge that you have learned over thousands of hours of researching and you believe there's a message you need to get out to the people to help them, you're going to do it. Not There's going to be no ifs about it. Well, if you phone me, see what I'm getting at? Trigger my gut to think it's urgent that I need to hear the shit that you've learned and share with the, with the people, okay? I got a lot of people that email me. And then, it, and, and it's funny, side note, a lot of people who do send me a similar email, if I don't reply, then it only really takes about two or three emails later, they start insulting me and attacking me. <laughs> right? Just can't win. But anyway, if any of you out there have been researching and learning on various topics which you feel are absolutely important, vital information to share with the people, get it to me. I'll share it. Okay? No egos, no dick slinging, no if you don't accept this or believe this or read this or contact me, you're a loser. Trigger my gut. Right? Give me some info. Make me convince me that this is important to get a hold of you. All right? Because if I start just phoning numbers, I don't got time. I don't have time to phone random strangers because they say I need to. I just don't. I don't have, I, I'm so far behind in, in uh, emails, even emails from friends. I haven't read, I've got pages. I've got pages. There you go. Throw me a bone. You got something that's very important. Throw me a bone. All right, one more. I got to get out and I got to finish uh, lighting up the yard for Christmas. This is titled, Well, 
I'd be damned if it didn't happen. Good morning, Steve. My name is Gene Day. Feel free to use my name because I'm all about the truth. I'm ready to roll with anyone who would try to make me keep mine silent. I've always known they were real. I've seen Patty on film when I was a kid and never had a doubt. That's when I learned to start, that's when I learned to start doubting people. When someone can see as well as I can, but say they don't see what I clearly can, then they have an issue with their self. I trust my gut and my eyes. Anyhow, a year ago, my stepdad, my stepdad and I was on our porch one night and a dog was barking in the field about seven yards away. And all of a sudden, a scream slash howl was blasted at the dog. It didn't make another sound. I went over the next morning before work to have a look around and I found tracks. Then I found a Sasquatch. It was 30 yards away eating blackberries. Jumped to yesterday. I was finishing up my hike for the day and on my way to the truck I was whistling. I heard footsteps a little ways down in the woods. I grabbed my phone and started recording video. There may have been more, but I saw four. Some were closer than others, but when I saw the little one swinging, as I was uh, out of there. Just because a little blurry doesn't, just because it's a little blurry doesn't mean they aren't there. I saw them with my own eyes. Thanks so much for you doing. I'd love, I would love to do the same thing around here. Gene Day. Okay, Gene. Uh, this little vague, straight to the point, no description. What'd you see? What'd you see? You saw it eating blackberries. What it looked like? How big was it? What was the reaction to you? What time of day was it? Roughly whereabouts? There's a lot of sightings around here on the island. A lot. Um, huh. It's funny, I, I got so much shit. So many, uh, so many thoughts rip through my brain nonstop, even as I'm reading. I can get, I can confuse myself. But on the note of around here, um, quick follow up on Sarah. So while I was away again, so I went down to where she smelled that insanely disgusting smell. She smelled and Ruby was pulling her away. Like, don't go down there. I went down there with her. We walked around. I didn't smell nothing. So there's no rotting, decaying kill there. Whatever that scent was that was there came and left. Also, she said that a few days after that, her and Ruby were out walking down the road and she said it, she instantly felt like somebody was like right there, right behind her head to the point she whipped around. And she's not a paranoid, she's not a paranoid person, jumpy person. And the dog's always with her. She has so much confidence in this big tack dog is crazy. But she was really emphasizing on the fact that she, there's no way. She said, I felt somebody right behind my head. They're right behind me. And she spun around and then she felt again. And then she, and then she started saying out loud, leave me alone and get away from me. So that's the update on what's going on around here. And uh, for location, that sp specific zone is dead in line in the middle of the highway where our local taxi driver emailed us in with a with a fare on board and they saw one crossing the highway headed in my direction and also if you went from that highway to where sarah's doing her walk to right here in this dead line the end of my friend's road is also where the long-term part of bernie family uh mother used to live in a farm right there and saw these beings on that farm property right there as well in the past years back so all i'm saying is the location is dead in line with for those other unrelated people not related to each other seen these beings sarah's right in the middle where she smelled the scent and felt somebody right behind her head the other day here you go where i share the emails from sitting on the quad by the river it was only about i don't know half a kilometer away from there and where you guys have seen the items thrown at me bouncing off the quad a couple times as I was reading, right? So there you go. I need to get that out. Now I got to get going. My brain's drifting away. I got lots to do. 
share my story at howtohunt.com. All right, just get it to me. And I know there's a lot of people waiting for me to read emails and reply. I'm getting to them, all right. But I gotta get my ass outside and get caught up. I, I All my bag and all my clothes are still on the shop floor from my last trip. Haven't even got the laundry sorted through yet. Okay, you guys, so be patient. I'm a one-man show here. It's funny, you know, like the Sean Ryan podcast. He just sits in the room, talks in front of a camera. There's five people that put together that YouTube channel videos. Five. Nino. I know Nino's got people. He's got an editor. He's got other people helping him. I'm all by myself. I have absolutely no one doing nothing, <laughs> okay, for me when it comes to what I do here. Nobody. It's all me. I got to read the emails, I got to sift through them, I got to copy and put them in my phone, I have to load them on the computer and edit them and deliver them onto YouTube, and I also have this farm and life going on and on and on and on. <laughs> I'm babbling day, man. Holy shit. All right, there you go. Be patient, everyone. Be patient. I'm a one-man show. I'll be back soon.